Hey everybody, how you doing? I'm Dr. Boyce Watkins from the Black Business School. And uh, last week there was a story about um, child support. Uh, and there was a, a child support card that allegedly came out in Delaware that put a restriction on what people could spend money on. And, and some people were cheering on the card and some people were not. They thought it was horrible. Um, and it turns out the story was false. It was totally made up according to Snopes.com. It, it just didn't happen. Um, but I wanted to talk about the theory of that. You know, just what that would mean and whether or not there should be restrictions on how people use child support. So um, to talk about this, I reached out to uh, Mrs. Noma Langamushali Moses uh, from HealthyBlackWoman.com. How are you doing today, Noma? I'm doing great, boys. How are you? I'm doing really well. Now, I was I, I saw this story and, and I thought it was true. Um, you know, a lot of people thought it was true. It was kind of going all over the Internet. And uh, basically they were saying that the state of Delaware just made a rule that said, that if you get child support and you get you're going to get it on this card and there's a restriction on what you can spend uh, the money on that you can't you know you can't just go buy hair and nails with it you have to spend it on educational expenses things for the child etc um when you first heard this without hearing that the story actually obviously was not true uh, what were, what was your first reaction well i thought that it, it fit in a few different categories on the one hand um there's nothing wrong with accountability, and the card was actually a, a form of accountability in the sense that you can't waste the child's money when you get it. Um, then it takes us to the next level of, well, what is wasting? And one of the things that you mentioned is, well, what if I was a recipient of child support, which I'm not, and I was using the money to get my hair and my nails done, maybe buy alcohol and who knows what else. Um, then, of course, I'm abusing the system. Um, and then... So it follows then that if I feel like I'm using the card for the right things or using the money for the right things, I should um, I should have no problem with that money being monitored. Interesting. So what do you think about, you know, I mean, what do you think about this idea that uh, because some people, even though it, the story was fictitious, um, they were kind of relieved with the, the, the idea that there would be some accountability. I mean, you know, we hear from a lot of parents who pay a lot of money in child support and their kids are not getting what they need. And they have no say whatsoever on where this money is going. Shouldn't there be some sort of restriction, some sort of accountability on any level, even if it's an indirect expense? Like, I use this money to help pay the rent. Or, you right. know, uh, that's fine because your child lives in that house. Right. But shouldn't there be some sort of, you know, parameters? I'm agreeing. There? I'm agreeing that there should be some accountability. There should be some accountability. But the thing is, you can justify a lot of things. Again, you could use the rent money to buy booze and then use the child support money to pay the the rent and then say, well, rent, he lives here. Um, but the truth is you do need accountability. I think that accountability is never, it's never a problem unless you're abusing the system. Um, if you're abusing the system, then you'll have a problem being held accountable for what you're spending it uh, the money on. But if you're doing it um, in all honesty the right way, you shouldn't have a problem with accountability. So I think absolutely you should have accountability. The other thing is I think it would also help the children who are not getting what they need. Um, because, again, that does happen. There are parents, unfortunately, who are irresponsible, um, and then the kids don't get what they need. Well, you know, I, I always say that um, to, it's funny. To entrepreneurs, I tell them that your business is like your baby. and mm -hmm. we, we got to feed it every day. It takes resources, lots of time, lots of attention. Well, also, I, I would say to other people that your baby is like your business, meaning that your you know how you start your family, when, meaning the first time you have a child with another person, that person has kind of become like a lifelong business partner at that point. And so, you know, that's why, you know, who you sleep with can can kind of matter because if kind you <laughs> it, it matters a lot right yeah. I, right it matters a lot because that person can be somebody that you're going to have to trust over a long period of time to take care of one of your most valuable assets in life which is your child and so um you know with, with, now with that being said um i i never understood why um, there isn't some not just accountability in terms of how child support is spent but it seems to me there should also be co-parenting in terms of how that money is allocated. Um, I don't understand why one person gets to decide where all the money goes. Uh, why can't I, if, I, if I'm if i paying child, and I say this again as a veteran of the child support system. I mm -hmm. paid child support on my daughter for many, many years, and I didn't mind doing it. Because even, even when it was high, even when it was more than I could afford. I mean, because I started making more money, the child support was just like, <sighs> that's why I warn guys, you know, like, be careful, you know, because right. because that, that bill is going to be a long one. Um, but even then, you know, when I would write the check, I would kind of say, well, 
shouldn't I be able to say something about where this money's going? I mean, you know, if you're, especially if you imagine a person who's paying lots of money, and let's say their child doesn't have what they need. You know, you just wrote a check for a thousand dollars, and your child calls up and says, "Dad or or mom or whatever, my, you know, I need I need three hundred dollars for a school field trip." You know, you're gonna say, "Well, wait a minute, I just wrote this check for child support. Where did that money go?" Did that money go? And there's no recourse. There's no sort of, you know, there should be a court or a system or something where a person can say. Uh, I want to at least make sure my child's taken care of. I mean, what do you think? Well, um, I disagree slightly in the sense that I feel like if you're going to want to share in how the money's spent, then you should be more involved in terms of, um, you know, taking the kid to that field trip or maybe the child's custody agreement should be that the child is with you half the time and with you half the the time with the, with the mother and so forth. So I think that the more involved that you are, then the more, the more reasonable it is for you to be able to have a say so. But if you're completely hands off and all you're doing is sending a check, then, then it is what it is. However, I still think there's a way that people can abuse that money. Um, and then I also want to address the other thing that you said, um, you know, the responsibility also goes back a little bit further in the sense that um, when you tie your, your life to somebody in that way, um, unfortunately, the mistake, quote unquote, not that the child is a mistake, but having a child with somebody who you didn't mean to be with forever has been made. And then there are consequences. And it's unfortunate that people can take advantage of one error, but it is what it is. But I still stand by my point that I don't think that if you're doing the right thing, you should have a problem with accountability. Yeah, well, you know, it, it's. Um, well, I'll tell you what. I, I when I heard about the card, I, I didn't like this the, the way the story was written in the sense that, um, I think they were saying that the money could and again this, this fabricated story was saying mm -hmm. that the money can only be spent on school supplies and and um, you know clothes and you had to check your child's shoe size in and just all these things they were saying. Right. Um, I, I wouldn't I wouldn't like a system like that. I, I don't think that's fair. Um, I think that any expense that's directly or, in relate, or indirectly related to a child um, should be included in terms of what the money could be spent on. But you really do see some people who really see child support as as a, an economic come up, if you will. Right. You know, it's like, OK, I have a baby by this wealthy person. I get to live a certain lifestyle for the rest of my life because I had a baby with this person. And that's right. and I don't understand that. That's, you right. know, having babies should not be a business. You know, it, it <laughs> says, you know, it, it shouldn't be your it shouldn't become your profession. Right. Right. Um, you know, but, um, you know, and, and, and so I think that in general, um, and here's another thing that I think is really funny, and I'll, I'll let you get uh, your take on this real quick, um, is, um, you know, it seems to me that that when you started sort of shifting where you now have women that have to pay child support, um, you know, uh, to men because they make the most money, um, the attitudes from some women, especially celebrity cases like Sherry Shepard and stuff like that, mm -hmm. they seem to get livid. Over yes, the I, I get livid. Right, right. So, so what, what is this? What is this double standard here that... You know, if, if I'm a man and I'm expected to drop out, you know, hundreds or even thousands of dollars a month uh, because I made a choice to have a baby with someone, why, why shouldn't a woman who has the means do the same thing? Um, I'll answer that question, but I wanted to also say that um, there's a reason, though, why there's child support. If you've been married to a person, there's a reason why there's child support and there's alimony. So there's a distinction between taking care of somebody because they... They, you know, they sacrificed or did whatever it is and gave up part of their life or, or restructured their life to accommodate you in a marriage situation. Then they get alimony because, you know, that, that's the lifestyle they lived. And you obviously also lived the kind of lifestyle because of them being there and so forth. And then child support is for the child. So, again, I stand by the fact that child support is for the child. Um, I, I, you're more generous than me. I think it's okay. If you say it's just for school supplies for the child, 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 that's why it's called child support. Okay. Um, if you feel entitled to also feel the, make the mother feel comfortable or what have you, if she wasn't married to the man, then sorry, you're out of luck. Okay. That it's just that way. Now to the question of, um, Sherry Shepard, people like Sherry Shepard. I remember when that story was in the, in the news and I was one of the people, I think I wrote several articles about it and I was just disgusted by her husband because he seemed to follow the exact track of what people, you know, the stereotypical woman who goes into a basketball, you know, famous basketball player's room and 
just makes sure she, she gets pregnant. And even if he uses protection, she steals the thing and turkey basted it and all that. Uh, <laughs> Wait, the, that the, the turkey basted. <laughs> so, so what? What? So what you're saying is that he's just a gold digging hole. Is that? I is felt, that? <laughs> I felt that way because when I, when the story unraveled, it seemed that um, you know when I looked at the history of the relationship, apparently his career was really suffering at the time that he met her. Um, and he was more than willing to just kind of go along. And then the minute that um, the, 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 they got the, the surrogate pregnant, then he changed. He's the one who changed his mind and said, I don't want to be with you anymore. But he had already accomplished what he needed, which is to trap her into the child support and all this other stuff. So that disgusted me just as much as the, te- the turkey basting woman would disgust me. However, I will say there is another level. The fact that he was a man disgusted me even more. But I can do that. I can say that because I say it over and over again. Men and women are not the same. I am from the school of thought that men are protectors and providers. So when you don't protect and provide and then take it to the other extreme of now expecting a woman to protect you and provide for you, yeah, that disgusts me. That disgusts me. And I I mean, I've had a lot of backlash from saying, look, not everybody can call themselves a man. And if you're collecting checks from a woman... And you're a kept man. No, sorry. You're not going to get my respect. Ooh. All right. Well, welcome welcome to the world of feminism, right? <laughs> where, where, where men and women are all the same. Everyone has a penis. Everyone has a vagina, apparently. That's, that's, the, no. world pe- that's the world that some people want us to live in. Right. I, I actually live in your world. I do think that men have a role. Women have a role. And, and, and those roles can be flexible. But there are some things that I think are very natural, and I agree. I agree. I, I personally wouldn't feel comfortable sitting back waiting on a woman to write me a check. Although at the same time, as a man, as a modern man, I know that um, you know I'd, I'd have to be open, for example, to the idea that my wife made a lot more money than me, or you know what I mean. That you know right. things like that, and I think those are things that you um, you have to adjust to because women women want to do stuff, and, and and it's fair to let them do whatever they want to do. Right. Um, but I think at the same time, if we think that women and men are the same we're just living in a fantasy and in a big lie and your your life is subject to nothing but disappointment if you grow up thinking that men and women are identical so all right well thank you noma this is this is a great topic i enjoyed it thank you all right everybody well we'd love to hear what you think so tell us do you think that um that there should be restrictions on how child support money spent uh what about alimony uh you know are there situations that matter if if a man fools a woman into having a baby so he can get child support is that the same as the woman with the turkey baster i i still need noma to explain to me how a turkey baster would be used so maybe that's the you, you that you know that that's i don't what, have the personal experience but no, i no, have that, heard it more than once <laughs> well I, I need to go look up the turkey baster story so i can figure out how that all how the physics of that works but um at the end of the day i would just tell everybody in general you know i tell my girls every date is a potential mate so uh if you don't think somebody would be a good co-parent uh you know a good partner for the rest of your life to raise a child then you probably don't even want to give them your phone number you definitely don't want to sleep with them because once sex takes over it takes a life of its own and it may create a life of its own so um i'm dr boyce watkins from your black world this is no malanga mushali moses from healthyblackwoman.com and until we meet again please stay strong be blessed and be educated we are gone peace